Dear learners, welcome to the video lesson on the topic Loss of Photochemistry. I am P. Banu Prakash, lecturer in chemistry, working in SUCR Government Degree College, Palamalaya. Learning Objectives Through this video lesson, we are going to discuss about the following topics. Definition of photochemical reaction and examples of photochemical reactions in our daily life. Differences between thermochemical reactions and photochemical reactions. Different photo processes. Loss of photochemistry and finally about the quantum yield. What is photochemistry? The branch of chemistry which deals with the study of interaction of light with matter resulting in a physical change or chemical change is known as photochemistry. What is a photochemical reaction? The reaction which proceed by absorption of ultraviolet or visible light is known as photochemical reaction. In photochemical reaction, the reactant molecule absorbs light and gets excited. The excited molecule may be converted into product. Sunlight is the major source for ultraviolet and visible light. Let us see the examples of photochemical reactions. Photosynthesis is the best example for photochemical reaction. It is the reaction through which plants prepare their own food. Carbon dioxide molecules react with water molecules in the presence of light and chlorophyll to give a carbohydrate with liberation of oxygen gas. Natural synthesis of vitamin D by sun's exposure is an example for photochemical reaction. Formation of ozone O3 from oxygen O2 in the presence of light takes place in stratosphere is an example for photochemical reaction. Vision process starts by a photochemical reaction of rhodopsin in the eye. The light of fireflies is due to bioluminescence or chemiluminescence is an example of photochemical reaction. Let us understand the differences between thermochemical reactions and photochemical reactions. Thermochemical reactions takes place by absorption or emission of heat. Photochemical reactions takes place by absorption of light. Thermal reactions occur even in the absence of light. Photochemical reactions takes place only in the presence of light. Temperature has significant effect on the rate of thermal reactions. Temperature has little effect or no effect on the rate of photochemical reaction. But the intensity of the incident light has marked effect on the rate of photochemical reactions. Thermal reactions are accelerated by the presence of a catalyst. There is no need of a catalyst for most of the photochemical reactions. In thermal reactions, the activation energy is gained by random intermolecular collisions between the reactant molecules. Let us see the energy diagram of a thermal reaction. This is the energy of the reactant molecule. The up, this upper limit of energy is known as threshold energy. The reactant molecules must reach this threshold energy limit to get converted into product. The extra energy or the additional energy that must be acquired by the reactant molecules to reach threshold energy is known as activation energy. In thermal reactions, the activation energy of the reactant molecules is obtained by intermolecular collisions between the reactant molecules. Whereas in photochemical reaction, the activation energy is obtained by absorption of light with a particular wavelength. The free energy change for a thermochemical reaction is always negative. The free energy change for a photochemical reaction may be positive or negative. For the reactions photosynthesis and decomposition of HCl, delta G is positive but the reactions are spontaneous. Thermochemical activation is not selective. For example, if you pass heat and the mixture of gas containing nitrogen and hydrogen, both the molecules absorb heat. If you pass light and a mixture of hydrogen and chlorine at a wavelength of 400 nanometers, selectively chlorine molecules absorb light. Therefore, photochemical activation is very selective. Let us understand photo process. Any photo process involves two steps. Primary photo process, secondary photo process. In primary proto process, the reactant molecule absorbs light and may get excited. The excited reactant molecule may undergo dissociation, rearrangement, 
isomerization or it may react with some other reactant molecule to yield product. This is known as photochemical process. Sometimes the exciter reactant molecule may emit back the excess energy in the form of light or heat. This is known as photophysical process. Photophysical process takes place in different mechanism. The excited molecule may emit back the excess energy in the form of heat. The excited molecule may emit back the light in the form of fluorescence and phosphorescence. The excited molecule may transfer all its energy to the nearby molecules. This process is known as photosensitization. Grothus Dapper's law. According to Grothus Dapper's law, only that light which is absorbed by a system can be effective in bringing about a photochemical change. Consider a system, a light is incident on this system, some portion of the incident light is absorbed by the system, some portion of the incident light is reflected and some portion of the light is transmitted. Only that light which is absorbed by the system will bring out any chemical change. This Grothus Dapper's law is also known as law of photochemical activation or first law of photochemistry. The reactant molecules absorb light and gets excited. These excited molecules may bring out a photochemical change, but not 100% or always, but sometimes it may produce a photochemical change or photophysical change also. The absorbable light may undergo any of the following photophysical changes. The absorbable light may be released as heat. It may be re-emitted as fluorescence or phosphorescence. The absorbable light may be transferred to some other nearby molecules and may cause photosensitization. Let us understand Stock Einstein's law. According to Stock Einstein's law, in a photochemical reaction, each reactant molecule absorbs one quantum of radiation or one photon of radiation. In other words, for each quantum of light absorbed, only one reactant molecule is activated in a photochemical reaction. You see, in this picture, one reactant molecule absorbs one quantum of light and get excited. The excited molecule may be then converted into product molecule. Stock Einstein's law is also known as law of photochemical equivalence or principle of quantum activation or it is also known as second law of photochemistry. Energy absorbed by one reactant molecule is given by E is equal to H nu because energy is directly proportional to frequency of radiation mu. Energy absorbed by one reactant molecule is given by E is equal to H nu, but energy absorbed by one mole of reactant molecule is called Einstein, which is given by E is equal to N H nu, because one mole of reactant contains Avogadro number of molecules. Avogadro number is 6.023 into 10 power 23 per mole. Therefore, E is equal to N H nu or N H C by lambda, because nu is equal to C by lambda. The Energy of Einstein in SI units can be calculated by using the formula E is equal to 11.97 into 10 power 5 by lambda in kilojoule per mole. We will get this equation by substituting all these constants in the equation E is equal to NHC by lambda. Let us understand about the quantum yield or quantum efficiency. The quantum yield of a photochemical reaction is defined as the number of molecules reacted or formed per each quantum of light absorbed. It is denoted by the letter phi. Phi of a photochemical reaction can be calculated by using the formula phi is equal to number of molecules reacted or formed in given time divided by number of quantum of light absorbed in the same time. In terms of Einstein's, phi is calculated by using the formula phi is equal to number of moles reacted or formed in given time by number of Einstein's absorbed in the same time. From this table, it is clear that for some reactions, the quantum yield is unity that is phi is equal to 1. But for some reactions, the quantum yield is very much greater than 1. 
But for some reactions, the quantum yield is very much less than 1. If one molecule is reacted per quantum, then quantum yield is 1. You can see this in this example. The dissociation of hydrogen sulfide takes place by absorbing the light at wavelength 208 nanometers. The quantum yield for this reaction is 1. The formation of hydrogen chloride from H2 and Cl2 takes place in the presence of light by absorbing the wavelength 400 nanometers. The quantum yield of this reaction is 10 power 4 to 10 power 6. When two or more molecules are reacted per photon, then the reaction has very quant high quantum yield. Pi is always greater than 1. If the number of molecules reacted is less than 1 per photon, then the reaction has very low quantum yield. Pi is less than 1. You can see the formation of hydrogen bromide from H2 and Br2 takes place in the presence of light by absorbing light of wavelength 5 10 nanometers. The quantum yield is 0.01. According to Stock Einstein's law, the quantum yield of reaction must be unity. But in previous slide, we observed that for many reactions, phi is either greater than 1 or less than 1. This suggests that many photochemical reactions does not obey Stock Einstein's law. Is it correct? But this is not correct because Stock Einstein's law is applicable only to the primary process in a photochemical reaction for which phi is equal to 1. This is not applicable for the secondary reactions. Summary. Through this video lesson, we discussed about photochemical reactions takes place by the absorption of ultraviolet light or visible light. According to Grothes Draper's law, only that light which is absorbed by a system can bring out a photochemical reaction. According to Stark Einstein's law, in a photochemical reaction, each reactant molecule absorbs one quantum of radiation. The number of molecules reacted or formed per quantum of light absorbed is known as quantum yield or quantum efficiency. Stark Einstein's law is applicable only to the primary process in a photochemical reaction for which phi is equal to 1 but not to the secondary photochemical process. Thank you.